again here, just between the spreaders, it's, it's easy to be a little bit complacent because there's not much to look at. But uh, I always try and stop and look at the spire itself, try and look along it to see if there are any imperfections in it that might suggest any damage. Hey. Again, we can have a look around the back. It's a little bit easier here to look at this track. If we look up here, look for any screws that are sticking out or scratches. Now, you see here, this is this is old damage. This is from uh, this was here the last time I did the rig check. The the headboard car had, had failed in some way, missed a slider or something, and was going up here and scratching the paint. I think they even put these actually when they came down. So this is a known thing, it's the, the reason for this repair is, uh, the reason for this damage has been repaired and now when the rig comes out it'll be tidied up, painted up. Corrosion around screws, things like that, things that can be dealt with short term by taking a screw out and putting the right product on it and putting it back in. Looking for anything like that. Alright, yeah, this is more damage, this is a broken car. Where the, where the sail buttons poked out and hit the side of the rig. Again here and down there, that's the one that actually went, this took it down a bit. So that's damage from this last trip. Same thing, a batten car when they were sailing is broken and it's been hitting here. That is only paint damage. Doesn't know if the carbon looks good. I always take that second photo just to remind me where it is. So I'm going back through my report. I don't want to. Okay. Stuff like that. But as a rule, nothing serious. No, nothing more than a bit of paintwork damage. Faster screws hold that in inside here and then it sticks out and out, sticks up and out a little bit. That's been broken off, these screws have been dragged out, and what's left is clearly a repair. So, you know, that's something that should be replaced. It's there for a reason to stop the swivel coming off the top of the foil, and that's obviously happened in the past. So, uh, the other job of the top hat is to prevent the halyards from getting snagged on this stick on this edge that sticks out. So for that reason it's worth having it replaced. So that'll be that'll be one of the recommendations of the report. Not an expensive part, but it can leak without it, you can get greater damage on these parts, which are far more expensive. So for a few dollars you can save a load of potential damage. Again now looking at the, the headstay tang, so we've got a, a joiner here and we can see that that hasn't moved for a very long time, this is, this is locked tighter together. Then a pin here, you can see that the head is secure, there's a nut on the back and I can see the roll pin that stops it from opening up. 
we're looking around a little bit of paint damage here uh, it's pretty insignificant you can see that those sheaves move where they're free This is this is the cap tangs or the hounds and again you can see the reinforcement. The tube itself is built up a lot with carbon here to take the loads. Between these three points and the backstay, that's the top of the mast that you draw. So it's a big structural point. These fittings thread in, so we're looking around here for any signs of movement. In the, in the laminate, in the paint, in the filler, and to be fair, everything looks good on this side. Shift on this side as well. Sorry. Sorry. A little bit rusty, but bearing in mind they've just come down from the UK and been at sea for a week or more, so it's not surprising. Everything really looks quite good dust and red rain, you just can't look at things, make sure everything's secure, anything that should be pinned off is pinned off, uh, no one natural wear or shape on the mainsail track or halyards or literally yeah, you know, anything, masthead fittings aren't, aren't falling off. This is one thing that's a, a slight design flaw, this is particular to this mast and something that could be improved slightly is it is possible for your halyard and mine to come off the sheave there which right. means that it'll accelerate the wear in the cover it won't do it any harm don't worry for now but <laughs> i'm not about to plummet to my death <laughs> but it's not long term it's not so great for the rope and these rollers ideally need to be further out to prevent that from happening so that's just a little maybe modification we can look at during the refit to make everything better Yeah, nice to be able to bake that. And rainbow warrior. Oh my god, right. okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so yeah, the other thing we check is wherever the wherever the rigging meets the deck. So these areas are of high structural importance where the pins go through. And you can see in some areas we have small imperfections in the gel coat, which in the case of these ones we've investigated previously and we know that they're not really an issue. Um, but we'll check here, we'll make sure that these, these bits of rigging are still secured, the adjusters can't move. Um, again, the same with the four stays. We'll inspect the furler motors and the swivels and make sure that everything down there is working fine. In back stay and the boom. So any structural connections from deck level on foot, we can look at the goosenecks for the bang and the boom, all these high load areas and look for the same sort of things any evidence of stress or cracking or indications that something might be going wrong and that's about it really I mean, we tend to look at the guard wires and you know as part of what we do but in terms of crew and rig checking then that's about it that's thank about you it. very much <laughs> you're welcome